History, the mystery box. No lie can live forever. The truth will out. In the depths of history lie untold secrets. Like a sea of mystery covered by the dust of oblivion, secrets that many would like to remain hidden forever. Unaware that the truth is a bright sun that tolerates no darkness. Until the anti-royalist revolution of 1979, the Shah made great efforts to rewrite history. He portrayed Mohammed Mossadegh as the main culprit of all society's problems in order to make himself look innocent. But as much as the Shah tried to hide the facts from the public, the events that unfolded day by day eventually revealed what he wanted to hide. of the Cold War, the United States played a role in the overthrow of a democratically elected Iranian government. On the 28th of August, 1953, Operation Arjux continued after the failed coup of the 24th of August, 1953, which led to the Shah's flight from Iran. retrospect, look back and say, you know, could we have done that a different way? And so we have regretted what happened in 1953. Uh, finally, when it comes to the whole question about, you know, who we are, what we stand for, uh, I, I think I've lived long enough to say that probably every country, every country has hypocrisy because it's difficult to be always transparent about what you're doing and what you stand for. It's a sad story that really began in the 1950s when the United States deposed Mr. Mossadegh, who was an elected parliamentary uh, Democrat, and brought the Shah back in. In 1953, the United States played a significant role in orchestrating the overthrow of Iran's popular Prime Minister Mohammad Mossadegh. The Eisenhower administration believed its actions were justified for strategic reasons. But the coup was clearly a setback for Iran's political development. Look at some of the Eisenhower decisions that were made. They were all controversial. Uh, the first one is the decision that he made in 1953 uh, with regard to Iran. Uh, the United States, together with Britain, uh, participated in supporting a coup in Iran that got rid of Mossadegh. Mossadegh was arrested and his government overthrown, a military government took over. Why did the coup against Dr. Mossadegh's government take place? His role in it. But let's see what it meant. Uh, Iran was the most important country in the area. It had the most people. Uh, it had oil at that time, not as much as some others, but plenty, uh, and therefore was a great force. By restoring the Shah to power, it meant that the United States had a friend in Iran, a very strong friend. And for 25 years, Iran played a role as a peacekeeper in the Persian Gulf area. Uh, one striking example, in 1973, when I was president, you'll remember the Yom Kippur War. And at that time, 
all of the producers of oil in the Persian Gulf cut off the sale of oil to Israel except Iran. That would not have happened if Mossadegh, the one that the CIA got thrown out, had been in power. It happened because Eisenhower, in his wisdom, did support those forces that restored the Shah, and we had the Shah in power at that time. President Niskan explains that it was because of oil. These confessions took place after a coup that Iranian people were deprived of democracy to this day. The will of the people has been the victim of tyranny and foreign conspiracy, and many people fell victim to his dictatorship. The people of Iran continue to be sacrificed for their freedom. Eighteen eighty two, the sixteenth of June, eighteen eighty two, Doctor Mossadegh's birthday. Dr. Mossadegh was one of the most influential political figures in Iran, despite his royal lineage. He joined the Constitutional Revolution, advocating for social justice and fought corruption in the courts. Dr. Mossadegh faced two coups during his political career. The one led by Reza Khan and the one orchestrated by Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, he resisted both and urged the public to do the same. After the second coup, he was arrested and exiled to the village of Ahmedabad, where he died. 1887. He started his elementary education at the age of five under the supervision of private teachers, and was able to learn the basics of language, mathematics, history and geography, calligraphy and writing letters, Persian literature and French. 1892. The grip of cholera had taken hold of his father, and he lost him. 1905, the cry for justice, Iran's constitutional revolution. The years 1905 to 1911 witnessed a pivotal chapter in Iranian history, the constitutional revolution. An English officer has reported the situation of tyranny to the British Foreign Office, there are large tracts of fertile land which remain, waste owing to their proximity to the main roads, as no village having cultivators on such spots can possibly prosper, or enjoy the least immunity from the pestering visits of government officials, and thefts and robberies committed by the tribes. During the reign of the Garjar dynasty, the absolute rule of the Shah meant that his word was law and the people yearned for a just and fair society. This yearning became the driving force behind the revolution, a movement that demanded a parliamentary system where the voice of the people would be heard, and decisions would no longer be made at the whim of a single ruler. 1906. Constitutional Decree Courts were established. This was the will of the people in the Constitutional Revolution. This is why the Constitutional Movement was initially called the Justice Movement. Young Mossadegh's anti-corruption and freedom-loving activities led to his election as the first representative of Isfahan, and he was subsequently sent to Parliament. However, he was later removed under the pretext of being too young to hold the position by the order of the anti-constitutional king, they destroyed the parliament with cannon fire and killed the freedom fighters. This led to a second effort with constitutionalist forces marching to Tehran forced Mohammad Ali Shah's abdication in favor of his young son Ahmed Shah Qajar, and re-established the constitution in 1909.
The first oil well was discovered in the Mars Jed Suleiman in 1908. Mo Sada never had any idea that his fate would be tied to oil. An English company bought the right to extract oil from the then Gaja king for 20,000 liras. The daughter of Musafai Din Shah Farak Dole wrote in her memoirs explaining the situation of the people. The people were poor and miserable. The rulers were busy with oppression and violence. The politics of Iran was so dark and the people were so heartbroken and angry that the signs of dissatisfaction were visible on their faces. The thunderous voice of the nation was going to shake and destroy the foundation of the monarchy. In June 1913, Mossadegh received his PhD. He became the first Iranian to receive a doctorate in law from a European university. Nineteen fifteen, academic activities of Dr. Mossadegh. Mossadegh returned to Iran in nineteen fifteen and began teaching at the political school. During this period, his interest in legal, financial, and political issues led him to write four books: Surrender and Iran, Orders in Judicial Courts, Corporations in Europe, Principles of Rules and Laws of Finance in Foreign Countries and Iran Before Constitutionalism and the Constitutional Period. 1916. Mossadegh was invited to become finance minister because of his expertise and experience in organizing financial affairs. But he did not accept because of the dictatorship. 'Riza Khan's coup and his dictatorship with the announcement as I command. In 1923, he was elected to parliament by the people of Tehran in the fifth round of elections. 1925, Constitutional Change, Transfer of Power from Qajar to Pahlavi. 1925. In his opposition to Reza Khan in the Fifth Parliament, Mossadegh said that, if we say that, he becomes the king of the country, and the prime minister, and either governing body, and everything, that is reaction and tyranny. At the time of the transfer of the kingdom from Qajar to Pahlavi, although Mossadegh was disappointed with the Qajar sultans, believing that Reza Khan, by becoming king, would create a government based on dictatorship and return to tyranny, he opposed this work and thereafter was one of its staunchest critics. In protest against Reza Khan's dictatorship and the constitutional amendment that made him Shah of Iran, Mohammad Mossadegh retreated to his village of Ahmedabad for 14 years, during which he refrained from political activity. Mossadegh was elected by the people of Tehran to the 14th parliament in 1944. His policy focused on oil.
1951, Dr. Mossadegh's Premiership and the Nationalization of Oil. In addition to pursuing oil issues, Mossadegh initiated a number of other internal measures, including purges in administrative and military organizations. There are three measures that Mossadegh mentions from his government's initiatives. Lack of forming a government until the nationalization of the oil industry was approved by parliament. Not to negotiate with the American mediator until the British government accepts the principle of nationalizing the oil industry. Removal of the oil mines from foreign ownership by sacking British experts and employees. Mossadegh's policy in the struggle was based on the two axes of Iran's political and economic independence, and the effort to establish democracy. In terms of political independence, he also supported the policy of negative balance, which meant opposing any kind of privilege for foreigners. Decoder, a prominent Iranian writer, philosopher, and lexicographer, donated all his property to the government in support of Mossadegh's policy. He inspired many people during the period of Mossadegh's boycott by the British government. In 1951, due to increasing political problems and economic sanctions, and in order to prevent an increase in the sale of Iranian oil, the British government, with the cooperation of the United States, refrained from buying Iranian oil to fight against Dr. Mossadegh's national government. As soon as Decoder was informed of this, he wrote a letter to Dr. Mossadegh which was published in the press. Decoder donated a sum of money to Dr. Mossadegh's national campaign and informed the Iranian people of their national and patriotic duty to nationalize the oil industry. In June 1952, Dr. Mossadegh appeared, before the International Court, of Justice in The Hague and, defended the national sovereignty and rights of the Iranian people, in a 70-minute speech. The Hague Court in June 1952, voted in favor of the, legitimacy of Iran. Mohammad Mossadegh urged Mohammad Reza Pahlavi to hand over control of the Ministry of War to the government to prevent possible disruption by the army and the Shah's court. Mossadegh believed that under the constitution the appointment of the Minister of War should be the prerogative of the Prime Minister, not the King. This arrangement would facilitate direct supervision of the Minister's activities by the Prime Minister. The Shah then asked Mossadegh, so should I pack my bags and leave? After three days of negotiations, the Shah refused Mossadegh's request. As a result, after almost 15 months in office, Mossadegh announced his resignation as Prime Minister.
هموطنان عزیز یک عطر ثابت به تغییر ناپذیر برای حکومتی که به افکار عمومی تکیه دارد این است که هر وقت با مشکلی روبرو می شود به منبع قدرت و سرچشمه لایزاد نیروی ملت متوجه می گردد و موجد نهضت بزرگ و عظیم ملی را در جریان حوادث و تحولات اوزا می گذارد. Nineteen fifty three, finally, in a coup d'etat that took place on the twenty second of August, nineteen fifty three, and was carried out by England, America, and with the cooperation of the court, in the first phase, the coup failed. In this defeat, the Shah fled to Iraq because the coup had failed, and from there he went to Italy on the twenty eighth of August. However, a second coup took place, resulting in the arrest of Mossadegh. Nineteen fifty three, Queen Saraya Esfandiari has described these days of Mohammad Reza Shah in the book Secluded Palace. After the incident of August twenty fifth and hastily fleeing the country, the Shah had a completely pessimistic view of the future of his reign and thought about how he would have to cover the huge expenses of himself and the court in exile for the rest of his life. In 1953, he was put on trial for anti-royalty activities. Mossadegh's first trial ended on 30 December after 35 sessions, before the Board of Governors went to vote. Mohammad Reza Pahlavi's letter was read out in court. In his letter, he wrote, In recognition of Mossadegh's services in nationalizing the oil industry, he has waived his private right of action against Mossadegh. Mossadegh protested indignantly. Nineteen sixty seven, he has passed away, and he became a teacher of freedom and independence for Iranians. 
یک دل و یک زبان قیام به اقدام کردند و تا به مقصود نرسیدند از پای ننشستند در این روز تاریخی ادده از گرامی ترین فرزندان ما به افتخار شهادت نائل شدند و با خون پاک خود نهال آمال ملت را آبیاوی کردند تا به همت آیندگان روزی بارور و سایه گستر شود و ملت ایران از مهمت عمد آسایش و استقلال واقعی و آزادی حقیقی برخوردار گردد حادثه سیوم سیر بوته امتحانی شد که ملت ایران را در خود گذاخت وزر خالص او را از ایار فساد و تباهی جدا کرد و مرک تجربه بود که افراد بی اراده و سوست انصر و همچنین خیانت کاران به مساله ملی و دست نشاندگان سیاست اجنبی از اون آلوده و رسوا بیرون آمده ملت ایران فرزندان عزیز من امروز یک بار دیگر دنیا کس به درایت و کاردانی و موقع شناسی و انضباط شما روخته است فرد فرد شما نباید مسئولیتی را که در پیشگاه خدای بزرگ و وزدان پاک خود پاک پاک خود و دنی را که پرچم و تاریخ پر افتخار خیش دارید لحظه از یاد ببرید حساسیت زمان و عدمت مبارزه و آشفتگی جهان و خرابی اوضاع حشیاری شما را در همه ها ایجاب می کند فرزندان عزیز وطن با تشمان باز و بیدار مراقب سردرست خانه کانسال خود باشید تا ما با دا تاریخ سردا از نت امروز به زشتی یاد کند و ما را مستحق نفرین و لعنت به